thine. We feebly struggle, they in glory shine. Yet all are one in thee, for all are thine. Alleluia, alleluia. Please be seated. Who are your favorite saints? No, really, who are your favorite saints? St. James, uh, James the Faster. Who else? St. Hilda. St. Hilda. Good answer. Hildegard of Bingen. Hildegard of Bingen. Excellent. Why? Legacy. Strong woman. Strong woman. Say again. There we go. So I can already tell you that St. James the Faster is not in the litany of the saints later on, but we'll get him in next year. Uh, email me to remind you. I know that Hilda and Hildegard are, because the litany of the saints that I worked with was an older version that needed some updating of people who have been considered saints for a long time, but just weren't named. There was a lot of dudes. So we got a little more balance, and we'll, we'll build that out next year, too. The resources are thin for balanced Episcopal litanies of the saints. I am really excited about this week. All Saints Day today is possibly my favorite church holy day. I love the idea that we don't hear tonight, but that is in the letter to the Hebrews about being surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. And that in that surrounding, we've got cheerleaders. Cheerleaders, so we need to run with endurance the race that's set before us. Tonight we celebrate that cloud of witnesses whose race is already won. I'm excited about this week because we're keeping sacred time. And we're letting each festival be itself. And starting to let these festivals' focuses shine brightly on their own. Tonight is the saints who've run the race, who the church recognizes and celebrates. Tomorrow is the saints and souls who we mourn, but whom we have entrusted to God's care as they move from strength to strength. Sunday is celebrating tonight's saints and tomorrow's saints and souls, but focusing on making a new saint, centering baptism in our communal life in Jesus. When we look at the saints across time, those who have run the race, Hilda, Patrick, James, Phoebe, Mary, Lydia, Peter, Paul, we see how often they were, sometimes because of their faith, excluded from community, oppressed by the government, leaving them poor, hungry, and weeping. Despite that, they kept the faith and looked for the day of Christ's coming again. They knew that in Jesus' resurrection, death itself had been defeated. The gospel text for today is Luke's version of the Beatitude. And Jesus' directions, there's a lot toward the end, summed up with do to others as you would have them do to you. Before the three-year lectionary, Matthew's Beatitudes were the gospel text every year for all saints. Even with the three-year lectionary in the prayer book, Matthew's Beatitudes were the preferred version, but you could use Luke. The revised common lectionary, adopted in 2006, 
has Matthew in year A, Luke in year C, and not the Beatitudes in Mark's year. You're probably most familiar with Matthew's Beatitudes. They're the ones on Sunday school walls or on bookmarks. Blessed are the poor in spirit, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness' sake. But that's not what we have in Luke. We have the well-known Beatitudes, the blessed ours. That's what Beatitudes are. If you think about someone being beatified before they become a saint, they become the blessed. But Luke's Beatitudes are earthy, not ethereal. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you who are poor, not in spirit, just poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Last month, musical artist Derek Webb mused, I used to think that the Beatitudes were aspirational, like strive to be meek, pure in heart, poor in spirit. Increasingly, I find them to be involuntary lanes of living. Circumstantial seasons you sometimes land in. Point is, they're the places where God is hanging out. Want to find the divine? Look for the people Jesus was talking about. The beaten down, rejected, and marginalized. A commenter added some wisdom from Paul Simon to this post. Blessed are the sat upon, spat upon, and ratted on. I like Webb's thought of involuntary lanes of living, circumstantial seasons you sometimes land in, while acknowledging that for some, that's not circumstantial seasons but systems stacked and packed to keep you sat upon, spat upon, and ratted on. Or like Justice Kagan said yesterday, people who have been kicked in the teeth by our society for centuries. These are the people Jesus is saying are blessed. It's not the people in fine robes, We've been hearing lots of stories about this the last few weeks, this great reversal that Luke doesn't just allude to. He makes abundantly clear. There's no demonstration of God's favor based on conditions as we see them. The blessed ones are the ones who don't have a thumb on the scale in their favor now. The people who are doing well aren't doing well because God has a thumb on the scale for them. When Jesus speaks to the disciples on a level place today, he's not talking about the saints who are yet to be tried, who are yet to demonstrate the depths of their faith. He's talking about those who are wearied by the changes and chances of life. He's talking about those on the margins, those whom the saints served, even if they themselves were outcasts. In Luke today, unlike in Matthew, Jesus doesn't just pronounce blessing. Jesus gives curses, woes, and he means them. Luke has made clear since last Advent that Jesus comes to right the wrongs of the world and to create a just society. There's nothing clearer than today's directions about the grace reversal of what Jesus has come to bring. Woe to you who are rich. Woe to you who are full. Woe to you who are always joyful and carefree. 
You've had yours on this earth. Enjoy it while it lasts because it won't be that way at the end of time. As we celebrate all the saints whose work is done and whose rest is won, the church points us to Jesus. A beloved All Saints hymn says, They loved their Lord so dear, so dear, and God's love made them strong. They followed the right for Jesus' sake the whole of their good lives long. These are the people we celebrate tonight, the ones who've gone to the inheritance that Ephesians talks about, the inheritance of everlasting life, given to them through God's work in Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. So we celebrate them tonight. We feebly struggle, as I opened with, and as is my favorite verse of For All the Saints. Looking through my archives, I appear to start almost every All Saints sermon with that verse, whether I mean to or not. We feebly struggle, whether we're struggling in the ways that Jesus calls blessed, or struggling and living in a way that Jesus calls cursed. We feebly struggle, but the saints in glory shine. And in their shining light, we ask them to pray for us as we celebrate them we ask them to intercede to Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, so that we might follow their example, running the race that is set before us, that we too might receive that inheritance and join them as stars appearing. Holy Saints of God, pray for us. Amen. Amen.